Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for Got Bots 4, Making Bots with the Azure Portal. This is the fourth in our Got Bots 5 part series. Before we start, I have a few quick things to go over. Please feel free to ask questions using the live YouTube or Twitch chat. In the chat, we'll also be sharing some links to the Reactor Meetup page and monthly newsletter if you're interested in checking out what other sessions we have coming up. If you haven't already, please check in using our event check-in at aka.ms slash reactor check-in with event ID 13978. By checking in, you'll receive links to content that go along with today's session. We will be adding today's session to our YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. And finally, near the end, I will share a link to our reactor survey. If you have a few minutes, we greatly appreciate your feedback. I will now hand it over to Chloe. Hello, everyone. We're back. We're back. Did you all miss me? Who's back from previous streams? Is this your first Scott Bots that you've joined us for? Is this your second, your third? Let me know. And let me know where you're joining from in the chat. Um, if you are new to this stream, first of all, welcome. Uh, second of all, um, I hope you're ready to learn about bots. Um, oh, hi, Mike Zhang. Oh, first time here. Oh, I'm so excited. What brings you here? Are you here to learn about bots? Did you hear about this on Twitter? And you're just like, what the heck is this? Oh, you're back from India. Oh my gosh, welcome back. Um, I'm really excited. We're gonna, this is gonna be kind of a re like request, live request show in a way, because previously I kind of went into each stream knowing exactly what we're gonna do. I have an idea of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna pick up where we left off last week on our lovely Clippy Q&A bot, but I'm gonna be taking requests this stream. Actually, I'm gonna send out a tweet right now, tell people to join us. Um, but I'm gonna be taking some bot requests on this stream. And um, if you don't know what bots we've made previously, I'll do a little recap of the ones that we've uh, done in our last couple weeks. Um, but yeah, let me know in the chat what brings you here. If there's a bot request that you have, um, I got a pretty great bot request on Twitter earlier that I'll share in a second. Let me send this tweet real quick. Um, taking your bot requests live, taking your bot requests live. I know this is riveting content. Me tweeting. You can see like how I look with my double chin in the reflection. Um, but yeah, let me know what brings you to the stream today. Are you totally new to bots? Do you have some experience with bots? Are you scared of bots? I know I was kind of scared of bots before I learned about them. But uh, this series is all about bots for good. Taking your bot requests, join me live with the Microsoft Reactor. There we go. Here we go. Got to put some emojis. Got to put a robot, obviously. Okay, there we go. Just dropping this link in here and tweeted, tweeted. Okay, go retweet that if you want more people to join. <laughs> um, cool. So today we're going to be having fun. Today will be no exception to our previous streams, but I'm thinking we can take some bot requests um, and we can finish up our Clippy bot, as I mentioned. Before we get into everything, um, let's do a quick previously on got bots ooh and this says this will be my second event i attended got bots too making bots with logic apps ooh fun thank you for coming back uh yeah we've made some really fun bots let's let's review them real quick shall we i'll share my screen here so if y'all want to catch up or if you missed any previous episodes you can head on over to aka.ms slash got bots links that will be there the entire stream. You can go check that out. But that will bring you to this lovely summary page here um, where I have all of the links to our previous episodes as well as our upcoming live streams. This is the one we're on now, of course. Um, so if you want to open another tab with this same video in it, you can go here. But let's do a quick previously on Got Bots to get your brain juices, no, to get your brain moving um, and thinking about some potential bot request ideas that we can do. So if you did not join us for our first one, you're previously on Got Bots. Um, also shout out to Sean Diston wearing this awesome shirt uh, from his Ninja Turtles podcast. And that was a Sean Diston re reference if you uh, are into comedy bang bang at all. Um, okay, so 
Got bots one intro to bots and ethical bot creation. So on this stream, I should also mention these uh, recap things have all of these lovely timestamps here. So if you want to jump to a certain part of the stream, you can. But this was all about ethical bot creation. Um, I ooh, I have the shirt right over there. It's off camera, but I talked all about shirt bots and my complaints about shirt bots, the importance of ethical bot creation. We of course, uh, how can we? talk about this show without talking about Shania Bot and the lovely PJ Metz, who here's an exclusive. If you're going to be joining us next week, um, PJ will be joining us next week to talk about his awesome bots. He has some really silly, great ones he's been doing lately, including his uh, <laughs> bot that he built to help him get sponsorship from Kickstarter Mountain Dew. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Oh my gosh, Daniel, I you should join this stream. Let me know if you want to join this stream. You're more than welcome to. Um, Because today I'm just going to be literally playing around with bot stuff. So uh, <gasps> Daniel's down. Okay, I'll send you a StreamYard link. Oh, I'm trying to think how. I'll, I'll figure out in a second after I do this recap how to get that to you. I would love to have you join. Um, so first of all, there's Shania Bot, of course. This is a one of the first bots that I built um, that literally just tweets, let's go girls, um, every day at the same time. It also, uh, we built on top of that feature that if you ask it if it's impressed, if it has the word impress in it in any form, it will reply, <laughs> that don't impress me much. Here's a very funny one. Let's go girls. Are you impressed by Jeff Bezos IRL flight sim? LOL Storm 4, that don't impress me much. Um, so this is just a really fun, silly bot that we build. And this, of course, uh, sparked the birth of many other bots, including Body on a Grande, Mechanical Carry, Just Bot Paid, my personal favorite, Britney Bot, Free Britney, of course, um, which this is another really simple one that I built with the Logic app that says it's Britney Bots. So that first stream was really all about intro to bots, a kind of history of bots. Um, Daniel says Twitter. If I send you a link on Twitter, Daniel, it will be from my Bon Jovi bot because that is who I'm logged into on this account. Um, of course, uh, we also built Bon Jovi bot. Um, but yeah, one was just kind of a review. Talked about what we'd be doing in the series. Um, got bots too. Making bots with logic apps. That, of course, is the birth of, I think, my new favorite bot. Bon Jovi Bot, which if you're not following, uh, you can follow them, Bon Jovi Bot with two Ts on uh, on Twitter. And this is a bot that just tweets, whoa, we're halfway there, which of course is a Bon Jovi song. Hello, is it Ener Energix? Energix, Energix. I'm probably emphasizing that wrong. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Let us know where you're from. What brings you here? Man. I feel like a woman. I should do one that does that as well. That's a great idea. Um, so we worked on Bon Jovi Bot. We built a Logic app on the second one. Uh, you can check out all the recap here. Also talked about, um, we went into a little bit more about, you know, uh, Azure Logic apps. And then we talked about Shania a little bit. You can check all the recaps there. And of course, last week, that brings us to last week, where we made bots with Q and Acre. Q and A, Q and Acre. That's like <laughs> property. Um, Q and A Maker, an Azure bot service. So this was really fun. If you didn't tune in last week, I we're going to touch on it a little bit at the start of this stream. Um, but we basically built a Clippy bot where we created a Q and A with Clippy. And what I'm going to do now, uh, let me put it, let me send Daniel, oops, I'm going to get Daniel a link to this so we can have a, a surprise guest on the show. How lovely. Um, but yeah, this, this stream, I figured we'd continue on a little bit with our Clippy bot, continue training and working on the lovely Clippy bot that we were making with Q and A maker. I can catch Daniel up on that. Greetings from Mexico. Welcome. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the stream. We have people from all over the world joining. Um, Daniel, I am going to get you an invite link and it will likely be sent from Bon Jovi Bot. Oh, Daniel followed Bon Jovi Bot. Great. Okay. <laughs> Here you go, Daniel. Sending you that link. Oh, wow. Surprise guest. So exciting. So if you didn't join us last week, um, we started to make a bot, uh, a Clippy bot. And if you've not worked with Q&A Maker, you can use a handy dandy link um, 
that I can put on the screen here in a second that will uh, take you to this wonderful learn module. I think it's aka.ms slash got bots links for, um, but Dion will put that up in a second here. And this will walk you through everything that we're doing today. So if you're more of a I don't know. I, when I watch tutorials and st live streams, I like to ask questions and be active in the chat, and I don't necessarily want to be following along. So if you're watching this in the future, first of all, hope there's flying cars. Secondly, um, you can go through and follow along with me on this one, but I would just recommend kind of watching this one, um, learning by watching. Oh, perfect. Yes, aka.ms slash gotbots links for. Um, and that will take you to this lovely learn module that will walk you through all of this. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to bring on a special guest real quick. This is a human that I believe we built, we worked on Britney Bot together. Part of the, uh, one of the, the co-parents of Britney Bot. Um, welcome to the stream, Daniel. Hello. Hi, this is so Serendipitous. I love it. <laughs> I know. This is this is so wonderful. This is not planned. Um, ooh, we got some questions in the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna just answer this. Um, ooh. What industries or use cases do you guys think are particularly useful for bots? I talked to a chiropractor about a bot to manage patient care. It was intriguing, but I wasn't sure if it was a great fit. Okay, this is a great question. I think what we're working on today, QA Maker, is really great for that because let me show you this witchcraft. Um, I think I have a tab over here. So first of all, Daniel, while I'm getting this tab open so I can answer Kev Jack's question, how about you tell the lovely humans at home a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Daniel. I am a developer relations person at a company called New Relic. And I also teach students how to code over at Bit Project and also hang out on Twitter a lot and just watch a lot of memes. I'm getting really into memes now. I know I'm like four years late to the game, but I'm getting really into like <laughs> really bad quality memes. So like that's okay. what I do on Twitter now. So um, what is one of your favorite memes as of this present time? So um, there is a meme about like the black hole, you know, like in the space time continuum. It is yeah. like not the heaviest object, the NPM modules are the heaviest objects known to man. So they're <laughs> oh, just like so physics diagram. Memes. You're like really into Oh yeah, developer, developer memes. memes. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I think I made a meme the other day. I've made some memes in my time. I love making memes. Um, okay, I, I made I a love meme. That. I like to make memes of people as well, like uh, of people <laughs> I know. So I, you know, like our friend Anthony Chu, um, our serverless functions friend. Yes, um, yes. So I made a meme of him, um, but like with the with a, a face filter, and I said like, <laughs> Anthony after cold starts because like <laughs> uh, one of our Azure functions was starting like really slowly uh, one day. So I was like, if it was Anthony personified, it'd be Anthony with a filter on it. So I thought it was really funny. But yeah. I love the idea of making <laughs> like I think the the greatest gift that you can give to a friend is a meme, and I'll do a shout out to your co-worker and um lovely human being uh ali let's see how to talk Ooh. she made a meme of me for this blog post um that still makes me laugh that i know you'll appreciate daniel speaking of memes um she photoshopped me into the rupaul's drag race uh <laughs> runway <laughs> I could so see is... you going on the main stage, like, and you could be like judging like a tech challenge, where like the, the the queens would have to design like an outfit out of like tech things. That'd be so fun. Ooh, I love that. I feel like analytical has to be on that one. But anyway, we digress. Um, so Daniel and Kev Jack to answer your question. So last week, have you heard of Q and A Maker, Daniel? Are you familiar? Here? Yes, I actually have used it before. It's amazing. Oh. It nice. takes like data and then it turns it into like a bot, like magically. It's that one, right? I didn't pay him. Yes, that is what it does. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So basically, y'all can go back and watch the previous episode um, at the lovely summary blog post that I made for GotBots episode three that you can check out at the links above. Um, but last week, I... I was hyping this up through the whole series because Q&A Maker is witchcraft to me. You can literally upload 
a brochure, a frequently asked questions doc, as a PDF, as a Word doc, whatever format. And it will just use basic machine learning to create a bot for you. So you can go back and watch the full episode if you want to see exactly how we did this. But literally what we did on the last stream, previously on Got Bots, is uh, I made this work. Word doc. This is the exact Word doc. We had a lovely, I forget who it was, but someone lovely in the chat gave the suggestion to do a Clippy Q&A bot. And so Kev Jack, to answer your question, yeah, I think this is, this would be a really nice, easy thing for something like a chiropractor or a dentist or something that has, what do they call it? Outpatient care, I guess, when you, when you leave like a procedure or something like that, where you could put frequently asked questions in it. And that way, a front desk person or the doctor themselves or whoever doesn't have to answer frequently asked questions about like, hey, should I fast before my procedure? Or like commonly, like what is the address? Like what are the – what are your hours? Um, I think that there's definitely a use case for something like a chiropractor. I'm trying to think of like managing patient care. There are, which we'll get into t today, some different um, – let me bring it up here go to my Q&A maker, you can add a follow-up prompt in here and be like, hey, do you want me to schedule something for you? So totally. I think there's like a bunch of different um, use cases for it. Uh, but I thought what we do today, Daniel, I don't know how long you can Wait, stay. Wait, I have one more point. Want. Yes, go I for have it. a really awesome actually random fact because I'm okay. actually helping a student uh, make a project using Azure bot service. And I found out this really weird fact. Well, it's not weird. It's cool that like uh, it's actually HIPAA compliant. So you can actually use it. Doctors and like medical health professionals can actually use it in their services while protecting patient privacy. I do not work for Azure, I promise. I just I know that him. because I'm helping a student. <laughs> I do not pay Daniel, but Daniel actually does run this awesome program called Bit Project. Check it out. Um, they teach folks serverless stuff basically from from square one, and it's great great program for students and newbies and beginners. Um, ooh, question here: What does the Azure por portal do in the creation of making bots? We will go into that a little bit later in the stream, but um, we played a little uh, we played a little bit around with it. Is that a sentence? In the first couple episodes, specifically with logic apps and things like that, being able to host it. So pretty much we're using the Azure portal to um, get our keys, put it into our code, like embed our bot, our chat bot into. So we've covered a bunch of different bots on this show, Daniel. We've done Twitter bots. We've done like mm -hmm. conversational bots like this. We've done logic mm -hmm. apps. Um, I got a request on Twitter today. So I tweeted out, <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this, but you made tea. And a bunch of people were like, oh no, I forgot my tea. And someone, some lovely person on Twitter suggested I should make a tea bot that reminds people that they made tea. So we may build that live on the stream, but I'm taking bot requests. So if you're watching live and there's a bot that you want or you want to request or you get inspiration while watching us walk through some of these, let us know in the chat and we'll build it live. Um, it'll be improvised. I have a suggestion. I would love to, I would love to like throw my hat in the ring. So okay, my idea up. is you should, I feel like you're the queen of bots. I am. So Thank I think you, you should so make much. a bot. <laughs> so I think you should make a bot to shout out other folks or your bot creations. Like every day it could be a new bot that you should follow. Oh, like, like a bot that tweet that highlights my bots. Yes. Okay, I love that. Ooh, here's one. Can we create a bot that can send us text messages to the Microsoft Reactor event that I have signed up for and that's coming up? Yes. I don't know if we have time to build that on the stream today, but I think so that probably would be less of a bot, more of like a triggered Azure function or logic app maybe where we could say whenever or Gosh, Daniel, I'm trying to think through this. Like, maybe we could either use the I Twitch think, uh, API or mm -hmm. there's a couple different I don't ways think, we could do that. Okay, the Twitch API, as someone who has suffered <laughs> personally, I've been victimized by the Twitch API documentation. It's a difficult API. I will say that. Um, <laughs> let's see, not for all events, but the event for which I have signed up so I don't miss out in my busy day. So this actually, this is a great idea and maybe something that I would use yeah, I could use an Azure function. You can maybe use Courier. So, like, it depends. If you specifically want text messages, probably use the Twilio API for that. So that would be 
yeah, I think that's totally doable. Um, not sure if we'll get around to it on this stream, but I really like that idea for a while. And like Daniel said, what's kept me from building this is the Twitch API is a little difficult to work with sometimes. Um, it's very, uh, as we saw earlier in this stream, so Daniel, you probably mm -hmm. saw me tweeting that I was about to yeah. go live. I want to build a bot that automatically just tweets out when I'm live. So I don't have to do that. So well, I think one of my coworkers up. built that. I will send you the link after the stream. I think one of yeah. the relicans of my previous coworkers, one of them built that. So uh, nice. like when we go live, everything happens automatically. Like there's a Discord notification that's sent out, like the Twitters, like everything's automatically completed. So it's I pretty think cool. Like I built, uh, so here's a project folks can check out. Let's see, Azure Functions Turnip Timer. Um, you could probably repurpose this. Um, let me find it here. It's on Dev2. It's the first one, I am pretty sure. Yeah. It's a video, though. Oh, because it is a video, duh. Um, I built this with Adrian. I'll drop a link in the chat for everybody to check it out. But this is kind of what you're talking about, um, Anish, where you could, what I liked about using Courier for this, ooh, I'm sharing the wrong thing, um, is that you could, as, so we developed this, it was super annoying with time zones, I will say that. <laughs> um, there we go, just dropping in the chat there. Um, but essentially what this did is it, I used Azure Functions and Courier and I was able to have my users choose how they wanted to be notified. So I get an email um, that lets me know that turnips are ready to be purchased on my island. And this is all just using Azure Functions, Courier, and a prayer, um, and a lot of time zone math that we had to do in our head to account for all the time zones to sign up for. Um, because fun fact, sometimes people's turnips are available in Australia when they're not available here, and it's a completely different day. So that was really fun. Um, but check out that video. That probably would get you on the right track with building that. I love that idea. Um, but we're here to talk briefly uh, about Q&A Maker because Daniel, on our last stream, we got pretty far with our uh -huh. Clippy bot. So we started building a bot with mm -hmm. QA Maker. And again, if you want to see how this all gets created, you can check out the previous episode to see how we get it hosted and everything like that. But where we're at now is here is this lovely Word doc. And actually, in the chat, and Daniel, let me know what questions you want to ask mm -hmm. Clippy, because we're going to put them into our Word doc here. Um, and we can also add them in here. Oh, right? I need to tell you a story. I have okay, to tell you a story. Up? There are students in this cohort of the serverless camp that have not grown up with Microsoft Word and they don't uh -huh. know the existence of Clippy. So you I know, get the feeling now that you guys have when I don't know Shania. <laughs> like I, sure. I, I feel you now. I feel like, so the thing with Clippy is I Clippy retired. Actually, that should be a question that we ask Clippy is when did you retire? I think Clippy is about 25, we found out in uh, creating this bot, 25-ish. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because Clippy has made a strong comeback in the last week. Last week on the show was when that tweet was going out about adding Clippy as an emoji in M365, which... It got more than that. Let's see where that tweet is at now. Chloe, actually. I have a very serious question for you. Are you What's a moonlighting up? as a CEO? Like, are you the CEO of Microsoft secretly? Because, like, I, I feel like that was such a Chloe move to add that to, like, 365. I mean, I'm like, honored that tweet. you think that, but uh -huh. um, I hope I get a significant pay raise if that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, look at this. They asked, so this tweet says, if this gets 20K likes, we'll replace it. Look at how many fans Clippy has. I mean, this is what I've been saying from day one, y'all. Like, bring Clippy back, and here we are. Uh, I do not run this account, contrary to popular belief. Um, but what I'm thinking, so just to give a recap, y'all, literally all that we did on the last stream is we made this word doc, and then we went into uh, Q&A Maker here, which I'll make full screen, um, and we were kind of testing it. So all we did was upload this to our knowledge base, um, and what I figured we'd do is we add a couple more questions, 
maybe add a couple follow-up prompts in here to kind of like show how we can do that. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, I like this. Just another step of Chloe taking over the world. Yeah, apologies in advance for um, the name change of Microsoft to Clippysoft. That's all me. My Whisper campaign is finally working. Um, <laughs> But I was playing around with this a little bit beforehand, and I added a couple of things in here, y'all. So we had a question for Clippy. And again, put your Clippy questions in the chat. Let us know what we should have our bot uh, be able to ask here. Um, but I was playing around a little earlier, Daniel, and I was just, like, mm -hmm. testing out, like, do, oh, it would be helpful if my – here we go. Do you have siblings? And then seeing what it said – I come from a long line of code. So that is actually <laughs> not what we wanted to say because the actual answer that we have here is I have a bunch of friends. Have you met Kairu? So what we can do, so I'm just going to hit inspect and I want it to do this one. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to save. Are we training the bot? Train. Like, so what you just did, did you just train the bot? Like what did you do just now when you selected the alternative answer? Totally. So what I'm doing in here is I am, so I want to, so the, choose the most appropriate answer. I want this one. Oh, that's so cool. And then I'm saving and training them um, based on that. So for example, let me do a better example because I've already done that one. But so if you didn't join us last week, a very, very cool feature of Q&A bot is this feature called chit chat, which let me bring up the documentation real quick for Chit Chat. I had it open in another tab. Uh, Chit Chat Q&A Maker. There we go. Adding Chit Chat. So if you go to our lovely Microsoft Docs here, um, you. so we had a bunch of questions in our last stream that segued great into this, like we planned it almost. Uh, but what about those use cases where your bot doesn't have an answer for it, right? So like... When we're building a bot, we cannot write every single answer to every single question. What the? Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. What is happening? Ah. Okay, there we go. That background, Chloe, is fabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, very relevant to our stream today. It wouldn't be a got bot stream if my computer um, monitor didn't randomly black out in the middle of it and disrupt everything. So give me a sec here. Uh, okay, here we go. Chit chat Q and A maker. There we go. Now I'm just imagining this at your house. So like in the center of your house is just a giant clip, like clippy, <laughs> like <laughs> lit up in aesthetic lighting. <laughs> so chit chat's really freaking cool because. You can add a personality to your bot. So we've got professional, we've got friendly, witty, caring, enthusiastic. I believe we ended up going with friendly or enthusiastic for Clippy. Um, and it has all this language support, which is really cool. But when you're building a bot in general, and this is another, you know, really important reason on, let's see, I'm getting all my tabs back here. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Let me get back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so let's say you're building a bot from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. Daniel's going to build a bot about, pick a topic, something that you like. Mm. I'm really into uh, Egg McMuffins now. Okay, Egg McMuffins. Well, memes. Let's say there's a meme bot where you could ask oh, meme. Yes. questions about memes, right? Mm -hmm. So if Daniel were to build that from scratch... He would either have to think of every question in the entire world that someone would ask a bot and make it. And, and I will say myself, I have tried to build bots from scratch before, and I have. And um, basically what I would do is I had logs of what my bot would, this is before I worked at Microsoft way back in the day. I was trying to build this really cute bot, Daniel, that was like frequently asked questions for Chloe, which I sh totally could have used Q&A Maker for, but I didn't know it existed. It was just a twinkle in my eye. Um, and what my plan was, was if there was an answer, so like I basically had an if else statement in my code that said, if a question is answered that is not a keyword or something that I have in the knowledge base that I made, then say, uh, thanks for that question, I'll get an answer for you. And then on the back mm. end, I was logging all that to 
add additional questions. But then being a woman on the internet, I figured, oh, geez, like people are going to ask it inappropriate things or people are going to harass it or whatever. So what's really cool about chit chat is all of these things down here. And some of them are really funny. (laughs) It's like, could you be any less entertaining? This is so uninteresting. Stop being rude to bots, first of all. I get really upset when my boyfriend yells at our uh, our Google Home device. I'm like, be nice to it. It's It has feelings. <laughs> um, but there's all of these really uh, funny pre-populated things. But you'll notice that our, our Word doc that we had with all of our different um, – questions only had like four or five questions in it so Mm -hmm. this fills in all of those other random things so we didn't upload like 10 pages worth of q a stuff in our pdf word doc that we uploaded so for example some of these are so funny you're the mayor of boring (laughs) bill like having different answers for that uh asking about gender which is probably why it was correcting our gender one earlier that answers a question for me but you can go let's go further in here like to page five or this something. is intense questions i mean this is like truly what i mean by you know as engineers we can start from scratch you can like and i've said this on every stream you can make your own logic app without logic apps like you can get a cron job like if you go to our previous episode for the bon jovi bot or something here i'll bring it up if you build something such as our lovely Bon Jovi bot here. Um, that literally, its only job is that it tweets. We're halfway there. Woo! Half day we're there. halfway there. Okay, Daniel, we need to educate you on uh, Bon Jovi because the way that it should be pronounced is "Well, we're half day there." Well, okay, we'll 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 educate you on Bon Jovi. We'll get there. Catalog. I need to get we'll educated. Get yes. <laughs> Um, ooh, we got a good question here. Can you share logic or data from a Q&A bot to Alexa or Google Home service? That's a good question. I believe basically it would kind of be the same format. I don't know how, because that's a Google product. I'm not really sure what the format is to get that in there, but I'm sure you could probably repurpose it. Um, probably do uh, Cortana. No, yeah, it's an right? API, so I think you could do it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah or at least you, could have, you would have the knowledge base. That I think you can. It. I think I, yeah. Um, but. Oh, you wait, build this I have to run real quick. Okay. Um, totally cool. Thank you for joining oh, okay. us, Daniel. It was really fun. <laughs> Thank and you. This was so fun. You should join Talk us next later. week. If you're around, you can join me and PJ. <laughs> Bye. Okay. I removed Daniel. He's gone. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so like I was saying, you could totally build this yourself, right? Like this bot is uh, just probably if you built it yourself without a logic app, without the Azure portal and not using the UI, um, it would just be a cron job that runs every, you know, every day at this specific time, uh, tweet out blank, right? But that takes a lot of different steps, right? You got to host it yourself. Uh, you got to build all the code and functionality around it. You got to figure out all those time zones with the cron job. So really what we did, and I can walk in there and show it to you in a second, is this handled all of that. We didn't even have to use the Twitter API to build this Bon Jovi bot. It was just something that we logged in through through Logic Apps. So similar with Q&A Maker, I mean, yeah, you can uh, try to think of every single question um, <laughs> that someone would ask a bot, but that would take you a million bajillion years. So really what this does is simplifies that for us. And really all we have to do is put in the questions that we know or we expect it to be asked. And then we can also train it based on what people ask it. So let's, uh, let's try another one. Um, does anybody have a question for Clippy? <laughs> Just answer with 42. I, I like that. That would be a good one. You could totally do that. Um, ooh, we've got a question. Can you make a bot scrape news sites from the web and the results be summed by the bot when required? Totally. Actually, I think uh, a student from, I don't know, maybe it wasn't a student from Bit Project, but that project does exist. Um, yeah, you could use, I think there's, you can use like all of the Bing functionality, search functionality in there. There's a lot of different uh, search features that you can do within uh, Azure Bots and Q&A Maker. Absolutely. Um, but what I thought we would do, y'all, is I could kind of show you a couple additional things that we can do with this. So what's really great about this is we can actually test our bot before we put it out into the world. So um, 
we have this question here. What do you think of staples? I love and appreciate all office supplies. So that's the answer that we want. If a question is asked, if we ask about staples, get my keyboard actually working here. Uh, staples? Question mark. I love and appreciate all office supplies. Perfect. But let's say we do one that's like, hmm, <laughs> um, do you like give me another office supply uh staplers let's see if that works probably not right be help if i didn't make it one word staplers question mark i have many likes okay so let's say we get that answer and we're like you know what i want this to answer uh the same that we have here which is i love and appreciate all office supplies we can go in here and go right here. Save and train that. Da, 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 da. And now we'll let that save here. Um, we can also add alternative phrasing. So like we could add different things in here, like add every single office supply that we can think of. And let's see, do you like staplers? I love and appreciate all office supplies. So super easy to edit and update and fix, right? But I wanted to show you a little bit more of what we can do. So you're probably wondering to yourself, Chloe, I see that we can add alternative phrasing, which we just kind of did. Essentially what that is, is just doing exactly what I did. But, you know, so let's say, let's do one here. Uh, I'm old enough to remember time before CDs. Me too. I, I remember. I, I actually was walking by a gas station near my house the other day, and there was this CD kind of buried in the dirt. And I was like, a fossil. I should have taken – if it's still there, I'll take a picture of it later and tweet it. Um, but, yeah, let's see. What are you made of? So let's let's add some alternative phrasing. Yes, me. I mean, I grew up with an old – my dad was a professor of theater at UC Santa Barbara, I want to say. And the university gave him one of the original Mac Pluses. Uh, I can hear the printer in my mind now with the tear off edges. Um, and that's where I learned all my numbers and spelling was on that device. Love that device. I'm very upset my dad threw it away. <laughs> Would love to have that on my shelf right now. But I have the American Girl doll version, so don't worry about it. Um, so let's add an alternative phrasing to one of these, just so you can see how that works. Uh, how about we add are you um actually let's do what are you made of what materials well first let's test it without it right so let's ask our bot. okay i'll save and train it real quick but we're going to ask our bot what materials it's made out of now we haven't put this in there so we know it's not going to answer i am made of metal well let's just see what material if this answers correctly, I'll be shocked. What material material are you are you made from? Oh, what? Okay, I guess because we put made from, so that's really cool. I surprised myself there. Okay, let's see. Um, made are you metal? <laughs> Not like music, like, <laughs> but are you? Metal? <gasps> that worked too. Okay, this is like very cool <laughs> that it is able to pick that up. Okay, let's do let's do a different one. Let's do um okay, let's do the staples one. Let's do give me another office supply. Uh tape. No, I want to do a more common office supply. Who would Clippy hang out with, y'all? Uh of course now I haven't used not oh, well, he's a paper clip. Staples. Uh paper. Doy. Okay. Um do you like paper? I have many likes. Okay, so let's add this as an office supply. Um, do you like paper? Save and train. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, keyboard. That's a good one, too. Why can I not think of any office supplies right now? I'm, like, trying to picture the target aisle. Oh, pencils! Okay, let's let's test pencils too. Do you like pencils? It's probably gonna say I have many likes. 
examples. So this uh, answer that it's giving us, the I have many likes, is not something that I wrote. That is something that's part of the chit chat, which is great, right? Because that would be a super poor user experience if we asked it a question it didn't know the answer to. And it was just like error for, for, for what would we say? Not a, a 4 clip error or something. <laughs> so do we like pencils? Obviously, is going to say I like many likes. But now let's test our uh, do you like staplers? Oh, no. Do you like paper? Do you like paper? Perfection. So super, super easy to just add those things in there. I guess we should add pencils now. Put that in here. Do you like pencils? Do you like pencils? I prefer pens. Oh, we should add pens. Do you like pens? Uh, Oh, yes. Oh, I've got some good questions in here that I'll answer in just a sec. Uh, okay, save and train. Let's test those two we just added real quick. And then I'll answer your, your question in just a sec, Mike. Um, so let's test our pens. What if I say thoughts on thoughts on pens? Wow. Okay, that's an intelligent bot. It's almost like I work here or something. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't know that it would do that. That's really awesome. Um, so again, if we want to inspect that, we have, I only do food for thought. That's funny. Um, so there's a confidence score of 70.92. I mean, this is great. This is working way better than I thought it would. Way to go, Q&A team. Um, oh, we've got a question here. I too would also like to know the answer to building bots for Microsoft Teams. Would this be possible? Absolutely. Actually, I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. I would probably recommend uh, Logic Apps for that because there's just a built-in integration for it. Um, but I can show you that in a sec, Mike. Um, the funny, the funny default answer to not being programmed to many things like to reply to it likes a lot of things. Yeah, it's it's very because you know it's so. I was saying this on the last stream that. A surprise. So I interviewed for a bot company once. I would shout them out, but I'm totally forgetting uh, the name of the startup. But something that I learned from interviewing at this company is you would be shocked how many people just have full on conversations with bots. Like folks will send pictures from their vacation, selfies, like people find, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of these like Japanese little hologram companion bots that are almost like a fake girlfriend type thing. Um, people chat with these bots all the time. And that's really what chit chat exists for, right? Is like all of those weird, you know, edge cases that you didn't account for with your bot um, already have not just because uh, if you go into Q&A maker, let's see, let me go to create a knowledge base here. So this is how we originally just you can check out the previous stream um, in our last episode on episode three. But basically when we made this, we were able to choose. So let me walk through this real quick. We created uh, a service in Azure. So this just opened up the Azure portal here. So someone asked earlier, what part of the portal does this have to do with? Here's one part of it here, which is we went into the Azure portal and we created a service in Azure that would be our uh, that basically would be our Q&A maker instance here. You can check out the previous episode for that. So first we did that. Then we connected our Q&A service to our KB. You're like, what does all these acronyms mean? So basically what that means is we connected our Q&A service, meaning this thing that, that we just created up here for step one, and connected it to our KB, our knowledge base, which is what we're working on right, right now. I'm pointing the wrong way. Um, and I just select my subscription and the service. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm working on one currently. N name it. And then uh, upload the, so populate it, which was us just, you can use a URL, you can use a file name. And this can be a brochure. This can be um, just frequently asked questions doc. This can be a user manual and it'll be able to pick up these things. The format does not matter. I think you can even do like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then this is what I'm trying to get to here is the chit chat. So you can put none. I wouldn't recommend doing none. I think there's probably a default answer if you do none. Um, that's just like, I don't know. Let me find out the answer to that. Um, but we can choose the type of banter that it does. So in this case, I, I believe we went with either friendly or enthusiastic. Um, and that is what determines uh, how it's going to answer. So you can also go in there and like edit, like let's say you're making a Clippy bot. I mean, that's what we're doing, right? Um, so let me go to my knowledge base here. 
And of course, this would take a very, 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 very long time to go through and personalize every single one in here. But you could literally go through and like edit these to put them in Clippy's voice, right? Like someone could be like, I'm uh, I'm feeling blue or like I'm feeling dejected. You could change this. I mean, we could do it right now to be like, okay, let's find a good one. That's not depressing. <laughs> it's okay to be not okay, but um, – Ooh, I have an idea. So, like, let's say someone says, uh, like, can you explain that to me or something? Let's say it's this one. Instead of, I'm afraid I didn't, um, I'm afraid I didn't follow that. You could say, it looks like you're trying to ask a question. How can I help? You could put it in Clippy's voice. Like, you're not, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? You're not tied to this chit chat. Like, you select it to populate it, but you're not like bound to it, which is really cool. Um, but what I thought we would do is show this additional feature we didn't cover last time. So let's see. Let's figure out a question and answer pair that uh, would require a follow up. So anybody have any ideas? Let me know in the chat. I'm, in the meantime, I'm just going to read some of these things here. Uh, da, 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 da. The funny default answer not being programmed. Yeah, totally. Um, can we build a bot for teams that would just mark attendance at a scheduled time each day? So mark attendance of who attended that meeting? Yes. I want to say, how would I build that? I would probably, if I was using Q&A Maker... We could log on the back end, like if it asked a question, we could log that answer. Um, let's see if we have time to get around to that. Something that would say, hello all at the exact time each day. Oh, to kind of like start out the meeting and also takes attendance. I like that. That's a good bot. Um, let's do a follow-up question to one of these real quick. And then, okay, let's do, oops, I'm going to delete this one real quick. I made an extra one. Let's do a, what are you made of? I am made of metal. Let's say that we do a follow-up prompt. So a follow-up prompt would be something, uh, if you've ever used Facebook chat, there's a bunch of different, not every chat supports this, of course. Um, so let's see. Uh, so this will provide, let me go to prompts here so we can just look at the documentation. So you can use follow-up prompts to create multiple turns of conversation. So multi-turn conversation Let's just read what the documentation says here. Um, some questions can't be answered in a single turn. When you design your client application conversations, uh, a user might ask a question that needs to be filtered or refined to determine the correct answer. So I think for the person who had a question earlier about maybe using this in the use case for a chiropractor or a doctor's office or a dentist office or just a business in general, um, that could be a really good example here, right? So let's see what they have in the documentation. So multi-turn manages a conversation with the user to determine the final answer as shown in the following image. So the example they have here is my account. And then they have these buttons here that say, oh, it looks like you're trying to get help with your Surface Pro. Um, do you want to sign in? Do you want to use, you know, so this allows us to make like multi-step things. Or like, do you want to turn off your device? Do you want to turn it on? So... Personally, I have found um, the only times that I've really used multi-turn, I'm trying to think, when, uh, let's see, ooh, um, let's say that we asked Clippy, like, hey, Clippy, what is, ooh, someone give me a question for Clippy, and then I'll try to think of a multi-turn one. Um, you can add files to your knowledge base for multi-turn if you're like, let's, say, oh, here's one. So, like, let's say that you have... I mean, this would be a little difficult with HIPAA, so I'm not going to use <laughs> a medical thing for, let's say you have a, a flower shop and there is a question, what would you ask the flower shop? Like, what are, oh, here's one, what are your hours? And then you could be like, what day would you like the hours for? And then you could do a multi-turn based on, uh, maybe you have different hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays or something like that. You could answer specifically instead of just putting like a big statement of it. I actually think in my wine bot, which I mentioned on the previous stream, um, and I'll drop this in the chat as well. This is a Q&A bot that I built with a student at Holberton Academy who was a sommelier turned dev and had all of this amazing wine knowledge about wine. 
and they had this great idea here i'll plop this in the chat real quick to create a bot that would answer frequently asked questions about wine and um let's see da, da, da. and i believe we did multi-turn in this one let's see so this is the same thing we uploaded uh, a word doc that essentially just had some frequently asked questions about wine like what would pair well with this what would you know and i believe we had let's see did we have a multi-turn one in here probably did oh and we hooked it up so to answer the question earlier about uh text messages this doesn't have to be just like posted on your website or like on your you know dev2 profile or whatever it may be i, don't, I actually don't think you do it on a dev2 profile but you could have it um set up with a phone number we have this twilio integration where you can configure twilio with it and have this be like a chat bot that you do through your phone it doesn't have to be on the web which is really cool um but yeah, basically multi-turn would exist for a scenario where we want to follow up prompt. Personally, I've not run into too many instances where I need multi-turn. It's usually if something needs to get really specific. I don't think we need this with our Clippy bot, but it's really easy for us to do this. Um, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to make sure that I ask, answer all the questions in the chat here. Um, the title of this stream is, of course, working with the Azure portal. We haven't spent too much time in the Azure portal today, mainly because I wanted to make sure folks got their questions asked from the previous Q&A stream that we did. Um, but let's see, how much time do we have? Mm, a little less than 10 minutes. Any bot requests? Because I think we could probably whip up a logic app real quick in the time that we had. Or we can add more questions to our Clippy bots. Totally up to y'all. But let's say that we are done with like this, these are all the questions. Let's say we, we added like a hundred more Clippy Q&A things. We went in here, we updated all of our different uh, Q&A things to be in the tone that we wanted it to. Um, bot request, auto ban the big follows bot. What is that? Auto ban the big follows bot. Is that the, is that the one that says like this person has unfollowed this person? Let me know. Maybe I don't know that bot. Um, we of course have all of these different options in here to be able to show our metadata. Um, if we go to our settings, oh, let me, do I need to save? Probably not. We've got our settings here where we can go in and change anything that we want as far as we've got our, uh, we can get our sample HTTP requests in here so we can play around with it more. Um, lots and lots of stuff we can do in here. We can add more, uh, so you can see here, we have two files uploaded. The first one is Clippy Q&A, which is literally that Word doc that we just had up. And this Q&A Chit Chat Friendly TSV is provided to us by selecting that um, over here. Let me go to the correct area. Oh, be, uh, create knowledge base. Um, that's just literally this radio button here that uploads that for us automatically. So you could totally make your own, I mean, if you're really bored, <laughs> you could open source your own chit chat. That would be interesting. Maybe you want, maybe if you're, if you feel that there is some, uh, a personality lacking in here, maybe I'll make a Valley girl chit chat. <laughs> and maybe I will do that. Put it up on GitHub with all the extra time that I have. Create an alternative um, chit chat that folks can use. Um, oh, okay. I see. They sell fake followers to make it look like you're getting more hits and come across as famous. Yeah, like a, I, I like that. <laughs> like, OMG, like the questions could be like, are you made of metal? I don't know, as if. Um, but going back to our lovely knowledge base that we had here. So I'm gonna go to my knowledge base, go to my Clippy Q&A. Um, we've saved and trained. So if I go to publish, uh, basically this is going to, once I click publish here, this is going to give me my endpoint. And then that allows us to use that for our bot or our app. So this can be added into Facebook messenger. This can be added into essentially any bot or chat service that you want. I'm not going to publish it right now though, because I still kind of want to play around with my Clippy bot, but really that is all that you would do. Um, the knowledge base would be published to Q and a demo, which is what the service that we made in Azure up in the portal. Um, but pretty simple, y'all. Pretty simple. So really all that we did to do to make this 
bought before we go on and, and publish it is we created a knowledge base or first we created a Q&A service. Um, we connected our Q&A service to our knowledge base. And then we went in here, we named our knowledge base, we populated it with the knowledge base, and then we created the knowledge base. And then our final step is to publish it and then basically sync it and link it back up. And then we're given all of the all of the things that we need to be able to have this bot run out in the wild. So coming at you soon, maybe I'm going to embed like, I'm trying to think where would be a good place to host a Glibby bot? I'm trying to think. But I'm just, with seeing how many people liked that tweet, I'm concerned that my, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get too many hits on my Clippy bot. So maybe I'm a little hesitant on publishing it. <laughs> oh, Azure Static Web App. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, Ooh, that's a really good idea. My only concern, like I would encourage someone else to do it maybe because I do get a significant amount of Azure credits as a cloud advocate, but seeing that 174K people liked that Clippy bot, I would just get too concerned that my bot would go viral and then I'd have to pay too much in hosting for people to use it. You know, first world problems, Clippy's so great. Um, any questions? We got about, we got a couple minutes left here. Um, I guess... In the time that we have saved, uh, <laughs> yeah, send me an invoice on that one. Perfect. Um, I did get a request to create a bot that would remind people that they had tea. I don't think I have time to make that on the stream today, but I may just make that for fun and tweet it out. So definitely, uh, if you haven't yet, make sure that you go to aka.ms slash gotbots links that has all of the links to all of our previous episodes. You can check out all the recaps that I've written for our previous ones. The recap for this episode will probably be up tomorrow. Um, but next week, y'all, so excited. We're going to have a guest, a return guest. Um, if you tuned in for our first episode of Got Bots, PJ Metz joined us, who actually let's show a couple of his bots. It's a little sneak preview of next week. Um, who I don't remember what the name of his bot is. Uh, <laughs> oh, there he is. He's popping up right in here. There's a Mountain Dew Kickstarter bot that PJ has built that he's going to talk about on the stream when he comes on. I see it in my feed every day. And here we go. It's been 51 days of asking Kickstarter Dew and Mountain Dew for a sponsorship. Hit me up. I'm probably one of the people who liked this. No, I'm not. But Brandon Minnick did. Um, but this is a bot that PJ built recently that's cracked me up. It's just him pleading for sponsorship. But PJ has made a lot of the diva bots that we covered on the first one together. Um, send us your bot ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sarah Gothels is like, oh, my God, I didn't know about this one. Yeah, this one just keeps popping up in my feed randomly. It's very funny. And, of course, it updates every time with how many days it's been. So this one said 51, the one before that obviously said 50 so he's <laughs> he's uh it, it's a great bot here we go here's 50 right here um so we'll talk a little bit about this bot we'll probably make a bot live i'm trying to think what a good bot would be to make with pj uh we have some we do have some ideas that have been on the back burner for a while um oh probably a halloween countdown bot that's probably what we're going to do. Um, something Halloween themed, like maybe a almost like an advent calendar for Halloween, but a Twitter bot. Let us know. Tweet at me. Uh, let me know what bot you would like us to make on next week's episode. But next week, we are going to do a show and tell with bot makers. Uh, PJ's going to come, maybe some other special guests, uh, going to line up some fun folks to come on and talk about bots. Um, but this has been really fun, y'all. Ooh, with quotes from the Halloween movies. Oh, from Halloween movies. Okay, good, because I've not seen the Halloween movies. <laughs> I like that. Like, we, it could, um, ooh, yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to think. What It could tweet out how many days till Halloween and share the Monster Mash. No, <laughs> we could switch it out every day. But I like that. That's a good one. A spooky, spooky bot. Actually, I'm in the early stages of putting together a Halloween-themed conference, so maybe it'll be a bot around that. Okay, stay tuned. You'll have to come next week to, to find out what uh, what bots we'll build. I know I've not seen the Halloween movies. I'm not really, like, a scary movie person. I'm more of, like, a – I like kind of campy, goofy Halloween. Not, like, goofy for Mickey Mouse. Like, oh, pumpkin, spiders, boo, a ghost. I don't like <laughs> – like, too scary. I don't like things to get too scary. Um – but yeah, what a great time we've had, y'all. This has been fun. I just got a message from one of my favorite bot makers, Gary, who may be tuning in right now. Maybe he'll come next week. Um, but 
next week's going to be our last episode. I know. <laughs> so sad. It's been real. But um, just in case you weren't tuned in earlier to my channel or to uh, – we didn't stream it to the reactor, but you can go check it out on the replay on Twitch. Um, myself and Ornella, a l another lovely cloud advocate on this team, starting – uh, in the first Tuesday in August, we'll be doing a series called Beat Boop, which is going to be all about AIML. Um, and I will also be doing another series in September. It's going to be really exciting. Um, ooh, GPS. Wait, I love this. And I know Sarah will too. Can you make a Michael Scott bot, Scott Spots? Absolutely. That is what we will build <laughs> on the next stream. What should it do? Should it just have like, there's so many things that a Michael Scott bot could do. I mean, I love that it's Brittany meme of, of Michael Scott. Um, actually, you know what? Here's what I think. And Sarah, back me up on this. One of my favorite moments from The Office, if you're not familiar with who Michael Scott is, Michael Scott is from the popular television series The Office, created by Mike Schur, starring uh, many lovely people. One of my favorite, and actually one of the names of this series, oh my gosh, GPS, this is so funny. Sarah, please, please, Sarah, mark your calendar. I'm going to message you after this. I am re-watching The Office from the beginning because I've been uh, listening to Office Ladies podcast. And there's an episode where Michael Scott goes on vacation and he comes back and he's bought a steel drum and he keeps going, feeling hot, hot, hot. And I kept going, feeling bot, bot, bot. I think that's what it should do. I think it should tweet out feeling bot. A Michael Scott and a Toby bot. Okay, wait. I love this. They could like respond to each other. These are some great ideas that I'm taking notes on. I think a Scott, Michael Scott bot just like has to exist. This is perfection. Um, just random famous quotes attributed to, to Wayne Gretzky and Michael Scott. Mike, that is a great idea. <laughs> okay, Sarah, um, this is happening. GPS, thank you for that idea. And you should join too if you're free. We'll just have a group chat creating a Michael Scott bot. Um, these are all great ideas. Toby bot. What would a Toby bot do though? Just be really bland and annoying? Or like, <gasps> okay, wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. Another feature. I'm just thinking of all of these features for the bots. You know the popular meme of Michael Scott finding out that Toby isn't when he find out it's Toby's not going. He's like, no, no. What if we built a bot similar to Ariana Grande bot, mechanical carry, all of that, where you could get a response from the bot in situations where let's say someone like tweets something you don't like and you could tag Michael Scott bot and it'd be like, no, and it would just respond with that video or GIF or whatever, or it will just be the quote of like, no, no, please God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what we're building. Well, we have a bunch, we have a list of features that we're going to build for this Michael Scott bot. So... <laughs> no 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 yeah send us all of your <laughs> i'm so glad sarah we're just we're creating and thank you uh <laughs> random hr complaints okay toby bot and michael scott bot coming soon um this is gonna be so fun join us next week uh we will be creating a michael scott bot i think this has to happen and i'm sure i'm sure that pj will agree okay without further ado we're, we're a couple minutes over time but Again, any recaps or if you missed anything on this live stream, go to that link above. Check out this lovely I, – I go through all of these episodes, y'all, and I make meticulously detailed timestamps of all of the different moments that we have in here that you can literally click into the timestamp. So check those out. And uh, you can look forward to a summary blog post similar to this where I list out all of the features that we are going to uh, add to our Michael Scott and or slash – Toby bot. Um, in the meantime, you can catch up on The Office. <laughs> That's your homework. If you haven't watched Office, catch up on The Office to, to give us feature ideas. Uh, and yeah, that is about it for me today. I am going to end the stream. But again, if you have any bot questions, if there's anything that wasn't covered in this that you would like to have covered, we can maybe sneak it into the stream next week. Maybe we can go a little long. Um, but I'm so glad that you all joined. This is really, really fun as per usual. And I can't wait to see you all next week. Um, you can, again, check out the links above. I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth sharing. Um, oh, I, also... 
if you want to walk through what we did today, um, you can check out uh, aka.ms. Let me go to the comments here. Da, da, da. Um, if you want to check out the learn module, and this will be in the summary tomorrow, um, but you can go to aka.ms slash gotbots links for, I believe. And that will take you to all of the lovely, um, or to the learn module that uh, is associated with QA Maker. And that will just walk you through, like, you don't need an Azure account or anything like that. Um, and you'll just be able to play around with the Azure portal and build your own QA. Here we go. Got bots links, or aka.ms slash got bots links for. And that'll take you to this lovely. Uh, or sorry, that's not it. This one, build a Q&A solution with Q&A Maker. Um, this is how, literally how I learned to do this. Like Microsoft Learn, I'm in here all the time, just like teaching myself all this stuff and uh, training myself to get certified as an official queen of the bots. But anyway, it's been real, y'all. Thank you so much for joining. And I will see you next week for the final, maybe we'll have to do a season two. Let me know if you want a season two of Got Bots. I feel like we could make more bots, but join us next week, same time, same place, the Microsoft Reactor for the final episode of season one of Got Bots. Um, bye, y'all. Have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. Bye.